<laughs> Hello, I'm John Shepherd, and in this video, we're going to take a look at what can happen in your first competition of the season. Now, obviously, we've had a very restricted, difficult preparation, and it was great to do a competition. However, many of the athletes, despite relatively good performances, did struggle when it came to compete. So let's look at some of the things that they encountered, and from doing so, hopefully you'll also learn how to avoid some of these common errors mistakes. At the outset, I must say, of course, that it was great to be able to compete against the COVID background. Madison, Sarah and Karim were all competing in the first competition. Madison, despite some good jumps in training, began to revert to looking up at the point of takeoff, which is going to break your speed across the board. So you must maintain a level head position as you take off, which will enable the free leg to be swung in. Additionally, the lower leg just after takeoff needs to be pushed out to counteract forward rotation and create the hitch hang technique that we're really after. Okay, let's take a look at Sarah. This was her first round jump and it was 597, but she didn't hit the board. So in hindsight, it was actually a pretty good starter worth about 620. We often use a marker 2 meters 20 back from the board to indicate the length of her last step. So it looks here that she was behind it and therefore she's going to be short on the board. Next up, we have Para T20 World Junior Champion Karim. And despite potentially looking good at first glances, when he takes off, you'll see that again, he's going upwards rather than forwards. In this still, you can see that he's not hit the correct shape as Sarah is demonstrating here in this shot. Talking over this effort of Madison here, but it's still relevant, timing of the takeoff in a competition can be different to that which you do in training due to the extra speed and adrenaline that you're utilising. And it can take time for the body and the neuromuscular system to get used to that extra speed that a competition undoubtedly brings about. Invariably, the second competition will be much better. This is because it takes time for the timing to return. Here's Sarah, and this was a very good jump, but it was a foul. She directed herself forward from the takeoff and got an extension into the landing. So we'll be waiting for her to catch one in a subsequent competition. OK, let's consider the runner. Karim wasn't running as well as he could do. He was shuffling more than running at some points during the run-up here. Although he did begin to direct his takeoff in a better direction, he's still going upwards. He's set up quite well there with the knees parallel just before takeoff. And he's not gone quite so high, but he's still skewing round due to his arms not being in quite the right places at takeoff and subsequently thereafter. Obviously, the takeoff and the setup of the takeoff is absolutely crucial to jump distance. Now, on the day, it was also pretty windy, and the jumpers were having difficulty hitting the board in the right position. There were headwinds and following winds. Madison here sets up better than on some of the previous efforts, but again, the arms are in the wrong position. They're moving forwards too soon and then going round into the hang shape, resulting in a lack of the drive needed off of the board. OK, we're now looking at Sarah's longest jump of the day, 6 metres 42. It was wind assisted and she got a lot of height and that actually threw her out a little bit. She wasn't quite ready for the bounce, the lift that she generated. It did loop a bit, the jump. So if that happens again, she's got to work the takeoff more to direct herself more forwards. I tell the jumpers that they need to be ready, ready for slight differences at takeoff because if you can catch one like this, it's going to be invariably a very long effort. So coming into the board is good. The strike on the board sends her up and she's not quite ready for it. And she kind of plops into the pit, even though it looks like a good jump. If you're a jumper, you'll know what I'm talking about there. Again, something else I say to the jumpers whilst we're looking at Karim jump is to be in the moment, to not let the competition take over. You need to be thinking all the time and reminding yourself about what you need to do, about how to adjust to the wind, about how you're going to set the jump up. If you do that and run that over and over in your mind, 
hopefully before the competition as well as during it, invariably you're going to put yourself in the best possible position to actually jump technically very well and give yourself the confidence that you need to. As myself and Sarah discussed afterwards, you don't want to waste efforts. You don't want to run through. You need to commit on the run-up regardless of whether it's wind against or wind behind. This was actually a better jump from Karim after some instruction he was beginning to hold his positions and shapes better. And this was a 6.30 plus jump, but again he skewed round slightly as he came into land. Sarah ran through again on her fifth round, and she ended with a foul, and it did over-rotate into the landing. But at least she committed to that effort, and that is going to put her in good stead for our next competition. The more times you can take off at full speed under competitive competition requirements, the more likely that when it comes to further competitions, you're going to get your timing right. Hopefully, you'll have picked up a few pointers, both technical and mental in terms of your preparation, when it comes to competition and, in particular, the first competition of the season. So, as usual, good luck with your training and competitions, should you be able to do some, and do subscribe to the channel and leave any comments you may have in the section below or through my other social media. And do look out for plenty more videos to come. And do subscribe to the channel.